Welcome to the spine and deep back muscle review on Anatomy Guy. Now, last time we're getting into the vertebral canal and we were starting to look at some of the features of the spinal cord and the nervous system. And here we can see a model of a cervical region uh, as noted by the arteries traveling through the foramina transversaria. And it's not really important that we're in one region versus the other, but what we did to look at the spine was take a laminectomy. So we cut across, keeping our cuts wide, the lamina on one side, and then we went to the lamina on the other side, and we took off this entire vertebral arch portion to get into the spinal cord. And we're going to zoom in a little bit on the spinal cord to look at some of the features that we noted in the other dissections. Here you can see the spinal cord sitting in the spinal canal. There are nerve rootlets coming off on the dorsal side and the ventral side here. And you can see that they're going to come together. And on this side, you can see the sensory nerve rootlet coming together with the motor nerve rootlet. They will form the nerve root out in this area here. After they come a little bit further at the area of the intervertebral foramina right in here, that's going to be where the dorsal root ganglia is. Then they're going to head out through the intervertebral foramina and become a dorsal ramus and a ventral ramus. And we can see the dorsal ramus here and a dorsal ramus on the uh, body right here. Now, we also saw the ensheathing meninges around the spinal cord. Right tight against the spinal cord itself was the pia mater, the soft mother. Then we had the arachnoid matter, which sticks to the dura, the tough mother, outside here. The arachnoid matter is the spidery mother that's inside and between. And it's under that arachnoid where you see the cerebral spinal fluid in the subarachnoid space. Also, we saw a lot of venous plexus. And here you can see the venous plexus that's inside. So this is internal ve uh, venous plexus. And then there would be an external venous plexus, which would sit around the vertebrae itself. And this is going to become clinically important for the transmission of um, cancers that can come through the venous plexus because there's no valves in these systems, the venous uh, plexus of Batson. And this can take the cancer cells into the vertebral canal and the spinal cord or even into the brain. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go look at the real thing. So let's take a look at the spinal cord of a plastinated specimen that was taken from a human donor. Now, if we go to the cranial end, you can see that there's a swelling. That's going to be the cervical end right here. That's going to be the cervical swelling. We're just looking right underneath the cervical regions here. And the um, brain stem would go this way. Then it gets a little bit narrower as you get into the thoracic region. Then we get a dilation again as we go distally, right in here, to the lumbar swelling. And then finally, you taper off in the conus medullaris at C1, or sorry, that's going to be at L1, L2. And then it turns into the cauda equina, where you can see all of these nerves heading out to their distal ends. And that's a result, of course, of growth that occurs in the lumbar region as opposed to the cervical regions. The lumbar region grows quite quickly. And here, the, there you've got the conus medullaris tapering off, the cauda equina coming in. And now, right at the mid portion of the cauda equina, zooming right into this area here, you can now see that there's going to be a phylum terminale, which is that central portion coming right off the conus medullaris. You can see the enwrapping of the dura around it. Of course, the pia mater would be across the spinal cord itself. And then even at different segments, right in here and right here, you can see some dorsal root ganglia that are heading off as mixed spinal nerves at this point. Then they'd be dividing into a dorsal ramus and a ventral ramus. Now we'll go see some of those things on a baboon, which we have. In this prosection, we've created an entire nervous system dissection and done a laminectomy across the entire process of a baboon. So we can start up here in the cranial vault 
and then we'll move back by panning across, and here you can see this vertebral column with the spinal cord exposed all the way down into the conus medullaris region, and now we'll go a little bit further and we can see the cauda equina, uh, scully, don't touch the monkey. You should be ashamed. Now there we can see the cauda equina and all of those nerve roots coming out. Then we're going back up to the conus medullaris where you can see a small swelling in this region and this is going to be the lumbar swelling. If we go a little bit further up, we can see the cervical swelling right in here. So this is for upper limb information coming in and out and then down at the bottom we can see lower limb information coming in and out. Now we're going to zoom in to a couple of these segments and we can see whether or not we can find a dorsal root ganglia and a mixed spinal nerve as it penetrates through the vertebral column. There we go. Here we can see the spinal cord with some segmental nerves coming out and right here and here we can see dorsal root ganglia. After those rootlets come together, they're mixed nerves, which would then become dorsal rami, which would go to the true back muscles or the deep back muscles, and then the ventral rami would supply all of the other muscles, including the superficial back and anything on the ventral surfaces in the body wall. Now we're going to move to our dissection of the cadaver, where we took out only a segment of the lamina in our laminectomy, and then we'll look at the true back muscles, which would be overlying these in our review. So as we look at the skeleton, we know that the vertebral column runs from the base of the skull all the way down to the sacrum. And the dura, which is attached in the cranial vault, is going to come from the foramen magnum off of the brain, running down along the spinal cord all the way down as we pan down, all the way through to the sacral region. And there we go there at S3 level right here. The dura is going to attach, and that's the end of the uh, thecal sac. All of the CSF goes down to this level, but the spinal cord proper actually ends way up here. There's T1, uh, L1, there's the L2, so at the L1, L2 disc is where the spinal cord will end as the conus medullaris, and then it's the phylum terminale and the cauda equina that will occupy all that space within the thecal sac. As those nerves come together, both ventral and dorsal rami, trying to head out towards the uh, intervertebral foramina. Now what we did then is we took the chisel and we took the lamina off on both sides all the way through this lower thoracic and lumbar region. We took all these spinous processes and lamina off to look in and get a window into the vertebral canal to see the spinal cord. And now we'll go to the cadaver and take a look at what we've got there for review. In this area here you can see all of the true back muscles, also known as the deep back muscles or the um, erector spinae is one group and that has three subsegments that you need to identify. One coming off the iliac crest and running out towards the ribs where you can see the tendinous attachments. The biggest of those is going to be the longissimus which is muscular and runs all the way up in through and up into the neck region. And then the smallest of those which is best delineated in the thoracic region is going to be the spinalis muscles. So the iliocostalis, longissimus, and spinalis muscles. Deep to these we're going to see the transversospinalis muscles and that's a group of muscles that include the multifidus and we're going to pull that apart there. We've reflected these out of the gutter along the spinous processes here as we did the laminectomy and you can see some of these muscles running from the spinous processes downward towards the transverse process and those are going to be the uh, transversus spinalis. We're not going to worry about the different muscle groups in those. Uh, just be aware that they run down like an inverted V whereas the erector spinae run out like a V itself. Okay? Now we're going to pull these spinous processes and lamina off to see into our window. We're going to turn the spinous processes sideways and then zoom in a little bit to see some of the ligaments that you should be aware of. Here along the top you can see the supraspinous ligament just running underneath the uh, thoracolumbar fascia and then when you go between you can see the lamina, turn that over to the other side, 
There we go, I've got some cleaned up here. Here you can see the bone, then we have some bone, and we have the interspinous ligaments running in here, and turn it right upside down, and now we can see there's bone again right in here, and then we have these off-colored ligamenta flava. Notice how they don't attach in the midline, so when a, a needle comes through the midline, it won't actually go through the ligamentum flavum. It has to be off to the sides to penetrate through the ligamentum flavum during a spinal uh, uh, CSF draw. Okay, let's turn that off and we'll look into the spinal cord region itself. Here we have our window. Mr. Big Hands is going to pull some of those muscles apart. And we now saw that our spinal cord was uh, covered by dura, and then we'll pull that dura back. And we'll zoom back in to get a look at some of the structures of the spinal cord itself. There we go. Now we can start to see the cauda equina with all of those nerve roots coming out. And you can see down a little bit lower how we have a dorsal root ganglia. That's deep back and spinal cord. In the next episode of Anatomy Guy, we'll look at the posterior shoulder.